Sorry, we were practicing over at EPC today, so I thought we were over there. <sighs> Pre-game meal ready to go, huh? Yeah, should have got here earlier. All right, we will start with an opening statement, and then we will take some questions. And we're doing both uh, Alabama, and Alabama and Missouri. Uh, uh, with that in mind, big week for us, two road games against people who are kind of similarly uh, in the Pac-12, or not Pac-12, SEC standings with us right now. Um, so obviously big week for us. Looking at uh, Alabama, how do they compare? Look like they compare a lot. You know, Unfortunately, similar. to Georgia. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, if you look at them and you watch them play, they can do some Georgia-ish things with size, a uh, combination of that with really good athletic guards uh, that can keep us from doing things that we typically like to do. So I've been saying it since the first – since the media polls came out, I think they were the most underpicked team in our league. Um, you look at their – balance of experience, newcomers. You look at their balance of size to speed. Um, I think it's a really dangerous team. You've seen that in one possession games against Tennessee, Texas A&M. Um, lots and lots of close games for those guys. So um, bad matchup for us on paper, no question. But hopefully we've learned some things against people like them that we can maybe do a little better. Um, we played down, played good down there lot two years ago, so I hope there's some carryover from that. What about? I mean, can you just talk about Dungey right now? I mean, he's river, in a little bit of a roller coaster as far as their shooting percentage. Um, is he doing anything different, or are they just just harder? I mean, it's, she's being guarded harder. Um, I mean, I think, I think what she's doing is taking what the defense has given her. Uh, so. Is when that happens, when people are going to really keep it to be part of their focus is to not let her be player of the week or not let her have good games, it tends to lead to, to harder shots. So uh, the percentages I'm not worried about. The shots are good. Um, I haven't really noticed it, to be honest with you, because um, I know that her all I look at is her lineups uh, and how our, how our lineups function when she's in there as a, uh, to when she's not. And they're still at the, she's still at the very top of our lineup efficiency. So, uh, and I think that's a, a sign of what she's doing for the others. Um, but her numbers may be, I'll have to go back and look at it. You've piqued my interest. I'll have to go back and see what you're seeing. What do you, you know, going into this type of week, uh, two on the road, uh, do you, how do you approach it? You approach it any differently? Yeah, we practice at BPC. Uh, we, we do. We, we, those weeks when we're on the road, we try to practice in an environment we're not used to. Um, we pump in sound and stuff in there, try to make it create. Uh, as coaches, we implement what we call road rules, and our kids hate that. Um, but we have a lot of fun with it. We, anytime the ball goes out of bounds, we give it to the person that it probably didn't go off of. Uh, we call them road rules. So we, I'll give the opponents three points for a two or one three for a three throw. I'll just do something crazy. Um, and they initially hate it, but they get to looking around like, oh, road rules. I had to explain to them that that was a great 80s, late 90s, early 90s you know, TV show, but they don't, none of them got that reference. So I had to explain it to them. But we do. We do a lot of things different. Uh, we try to practice – like I said, uh, in our practice facility, rather than our out here in Bud, and, and try to implement some things to simulate what life on the road is, especially when you have two in the same week. Do you? Uh, I mean, how do you feel like the SEC's shaping up at this point? I mean, it's it's. Um, we just moved up to fourth in the RPI. I saw that. Uh, we are starting to kind of get to that point where. Um, you know, we start to move up in those because we're starting to play each other. We still have five opponents left to play that are really high in the RPI. So we've got opportunity there. Um, but it starts to – this is the week. I've, we're 10 games. Are we getting ready to be halfway? Is this the halfway point? Yeah, yeah this will be the halfway point. I always sit down and ride out after when we have 10 games left who all everybody has to play and where they have to play them. So I did that the other day. Um, but I think it's starting to – 
uh, group up in the middle like we all knew it would. It's um, to see who can survive the middle. I think the top and the bottom's been identified, and those teams are fighting to stay there or get out of there. Uh, and then the teams in the middle are fighting against each other to be the one that survives. I do think our league's looking at seven or eight, probably at large bids, six or seven at large bids, based on what's going around in the other leagues. So I think each program or staff's probably got numbers in their head as where we need to get to be, where we want to be seating wise. Um, and I think when you look at the three teams with us, Missouri and Alabama, we're all three looking at probably hoping to get the same highest seed that we can. So these three games being, or these two games being with those two opponents this week, I think it's real intriguing. Uh, can you just talk a little bit more you have before? You, I mean, you got you you have the best of both worlds with not just one good point guard, but two. And what does that do for your entire team and your offense? You know, if it's great that they get along like they do. I think it could be a quarterback controversy if they didn't understand the importance of each other to the other one. Um, I think that our team's done a really good job of embracing each of Michaela and IT for what they do and what they bring to the team. It gives me a lot of confidence to sleep at night and know that we're not going to have to find somebody to bring the ball up the court that's not used to doing it. Typically, they're not going to both be in foul trouble. Um, and if one of them happens to have a tough night going, the other one could always play a few more minutes. But I think they've both really settled into their roles. Um, they both have a, an understanding of what we're trying to do. IT has gotten to the point that she corrects me in practice, and I love that. Um, we have an, a kind of a football mentality in naming our plays, and a lot of times I will think one way, and she'll go, Coach, it'd be better if we – and so far she's been 100% right. Uh, and Michaela, of course, has just been a sponge, learning it and trying to um, – get a grasp not only on what we expect out of her as a coaching staff, but what her teammates need from her. And she's developed that at a very fast pace. She's done a great job as a freshman point guard in a really hard league to be a good freshman point guard in. How about uh, facing Missouri uh, second second time around? What do you anticipate to see different? In um, I don't know that a whole lot different. They they've kind of stayed uh, with what they do, their identity, and their but they've gotten better at it since our last time. Hopefully, we have too. But you know, I think there was a lot of passion and uh, a lot of intensity uh, in that last game that I would fully expect to carry over to this one. Um, and that's not just been a one game thing. That's been a that's been a three year rolling thing with Missouri. Uh, it's you know you have to have a toughness about you in that game, or you're not going to be able to function. So. Um, with it being the second of two road games in the week, uh, we've tried to make sure that our practices leading up to that have not been as tough as they have, need to be to be ready for that. But we're eventually going to have to turn the page um, and after the, we get back from Tuscaloosa. But you know it's going to be a challenge. Uh, it's, I think we kind of caught a break that it's uh, Super Bowl Sunday uh, in – uh, an area where there's probably lots of Chiefs fans. So uh, I hope they all go out and cheer the Chiefs on and to victory. Last thing I had, something he mentioned yesterday. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, Uh-oh. An interesting stat. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, Tolfrey is your leading rebounder in SEC play. All, all, maybe team. I think our team rebounds may actually lead. We've given up the team rebounding – uh, we've had more team rebounds than we have. She's had this big guard mentality. Uh, Y'all remember when it flashed, she started just saying, big guard, I'm a big guard, and you know, she's done it. Uh, and I think a lot of them are defensive, which I've always said I would love to be the person that guarded the other kid's get-back person because you can run in there and get tip balls and you can get 50-50 balls, but she's gotten a couple of big guard rebounds. Um, I think it's a focus of hers. I think she knows that's something that we have to have to start transition. Um, and I also think she knows that I don't care if she pulls up in transition with the ball in her hand. So the more opportunities she gets to go get those defensive rebounds, the more opportunities she's going to have to do that. She's a great decision maker. So um, I think it shows she's a senior that wants to win. You know, we all have those lists of what freshmen are and sophomore. Seniors want to win. It's her last run, and she knows that if she can get three or four of those a game, it certainly helps us win, but uh, that is an interesting stat. 
Mike, you understand where you're at at all times with your RPI. You're on the right side as opposed to last year when you were on the wrong side chasing. Mm -hmm. Does your team mentality, do they approach it differently this year as if they're on the right side, or is there still that hunger because they haven't been to the tournament yet? It's that fine line of walking between hunger and pressure. You don't want to put too much emphasis on it to where they don't play their best and they get focused on things like that. Um, we try to stay on top of it in the office and try not to let very much of it come downstairs. But we've got a really savvy group. I don't think you can hide it from them. I think they want to know. Um, and they have a tendency to want to know who we're playing, what their RPI is to. And they've got to where they understand that. If um, you know, There was a couple of weeks ago where we lost and we moved up. This isn't one of those weeks. You know, If you lose, you're going to move down. We uh, hung on in the top 25 in both polls, barely. Uh, I think they know that is reflective as well. Um, but that's that danger of being self-aware and being honest with them and, and talking about it is there's going to be those moments where they do feel, is it pressure or is it stay on that right side of the, the RPI question? Um, we're staying inside the top 50. And they, they start watching everything. You know, they're watching. They're pulling for Stony Brook, who's, I think, the first team to 20 wins. They're pulling for all of those people that, um, you know, Belmont played UT Martin the other night, and our kids were like, well, what happens in this game? I said, well, we can't. We're going to win. We're going to pick up a win here no matter what. So um, I think it's still a little too early for it to feel like pressure. But I think it's the right time of the year that the kids know. They know this game has magnitude. These games against Alabama and uh, at Missouri have a, will have a, uh, an impact when it comes March. And the selection committee sitting there looking at what you did versus people uh, in the same – well, they call them quads, I think, on the men's side, the quadrants. We're, these are games against people in your similar quadrant, and you need to do well in those because we know at the end of the at February, we're playing all quadrant ones. We've got five games against people in the top 30 of the RPI coming in February, so uh, we've got to continue to play well. But that's the beauty of not having goals. You don't have to worry about X this and X that. You just keep playing and practicing and – getting your shots up and focusing on the defensive part of the scout and you do all those things, it tends to help to work itself out. So they do know that. All good? Okay. Yeah. Thanks for coming.